A smart city, first of all, is, is not dominated by technology. To be honest, I don't believe there is a smart city. Uh, the best city you can live in is the city you want to live in by choice. So that's based on uh, the way it fits with how you want to live your life. It provides you affordable housing, good quality education, economic perspective, so job opportunities, but also it should provide culture, free space, entertainment, and of course, a clean environment and safe environment to live in. We had a, a very long meeting not so long ago with the Dutch government on, on cities. Um, and they now see that, and this is one of the topics this afternoon, I hope we can discuss, how data can improve our daily life, how to share data. What we do for commercial reasons as a customer, we should do as a citizen to help local governments provide that city of the future. Uh, and this is one, one of the aims that the, our Dutch government is working on. Well, ICT uh, tools or geospatial in, in general is, much, uh, is of great importance for cities. Uh, we don't build new cities, we just enhance existing cities. And, and what we need to understand is how uh, simple things as natural airflow help us to cool the city centres. Um, how to create, uh, I'll just call them lungs of the city, to create green space in the city where it's optimal placed. And some of the cities in Europe you see working on that are doing a great job. The city of Copenhagen, for instance, made a design principle. Wherever you are and live in the city, within 15 minutes of cycling or, or walking, you should be able to find at least a park or some waterfronts so you can get to, uh, at, to rest or at, at peace at let. If you look at this, the, the new cities in the Arab countries where they build artificial dunes to create an airflow, uh, if you compare that to the city of Berlin, where they keep on building in the inner city, where the average temperature is rising f five to six degrees above average, uh, it kills people. It's basically the blunt way of saying it. So, yes, the geospatial understanding how to use that, that scarce space is so important. Priority areas is, is designing neighborhoods in a way that these neighborhoods are, well, it's maybe not, not, not real, but sometimes I would call them villages. Be much more self-containing and connected so people can live in certain areas by choice, as your city would like to live in, but the city should adapt to the people that they are living in. Just to give you an example, if people in a certain region are getting more of age, they need more time to cross the street. So traffic lights helping them, giving green transfer routes across the street, should give them more time when people are older. At the moment, the system cannot understand, but by the understanding the group of people living in certain parts of the, of the city, you can make that dynamically. You can change that. If you look at uh, cities in Poland, where we help them to transform transport situations in the city, by taking away cars and optimizing public transport, meaning that you create new space for green. Trams will ride on grass and lawns instead of on streets, so there's more green space. Uh, it gives you a cleaner view, cleaner air, but the transport has to be an optimal way of transporting yourself. So this is what we do in, in, in cities. And we transport that or transfer that to other cities in, uh, now in Austria, we're discussing different cities. Um, whereas we already do studies to the future. Will cars park in the city or when we have a good use of autonomous vehicles, how will they communicate with the public and where they will, will they park and, and charge? Do we need parking space in, 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 in the city centres? Mm -hmm.